Hello students, this video clip uh, will be covering how to calculate weighted average cost of capital. Uh, we are going to use this weighted average cost of capital into the projected assumption part, uh, which will discount all the free cash flows in a corporate valuation uh, using uh, the free cash flow of the firm FCFF model here. Okay, for the first step one, historical data from Yahoo Finance website or any other data. So here the Yahoo Finance provide historical price uh, of Apple stock first, Apple. Then you'll find here historical data. On the historical data, you choose the time period, at least the five years. The five years, but we will choose the frequency in monthly. By doing so, we can get the 60, 60 months of price data and apply. Apply and then we'll download. Then we got the Apple, uh, the stock price in a monthly basis. Uh, for 60 month. Then let me just uh, drag this number, uh, this the date, and then copy to the price information, or uh, the month, the, the date information. So we got it, right? So this is 60 month. And then let's take the price information here, and adjust it, the closing price that considers the X dividend and then copy and paste to the price. We also need the, the market uh, the price in a monthly basis. So we are using the standard plus 500, the ETF, the SPY. So let's come back to the Yahoo Finance, then SPY, the SPDR S&P 500 ETF funds that is traded exactly index fund as index fund so historical data where you also set the time period of five years and the frequency is monthly apply and let's download and open this spy uh, the price information which, which is has exactly same dates monthly dates information that must be and then the adjust the closing price, copy and paste this area. Okay, then we collect all this information related to the price. Again, the point of this exercise, yeah, this the collecting data is that we want to get the required rate of return, which is cost of equity. When you calculate the weighted average cost of capital, we need cost of debt, the cost of preferred stock, if the company has issued the preferred stock, and then cost of common stock, right? The cost of the common stock is the required rate of return. When you calculate required rate of return based on the CAPM model, CAPM model, we need the beta, right? Beta uh, should be uh, multiplied by the market risk premium to come up with the accurate risk premium. So. Once we collect all the price information, then let's calculate the recent one divided by old one and minus one. And then we get the monthly rate. Let me just double click and then you create all the monthly rate of return. Monthly rate of return of Apple also can, ca oops, also can calculate in the same way. And then let's just click. So we got all the monthly uh, the rate of return. What we want to calculate is beta, which is the sensitivity of Apple to the market changes, market rate of return changes, right? How sensitive it is. So the beta, how do we calculate it? Now slope, right? The slope, open the parenthesis, known y, which is y, the, the, the objectives the rate of return of Apple first. The order is important. And then known as x-axis. So 
we also put the drag this monthly rate of the market, which is x-axis. And then we got this beta, the sensitivity of Apple, which is 1.18. Now, how do we get other information? The risk-free rate, three months treasury bill, you can just research uh, to the uh, any website where like treasury bill, t bill average rate of return and then you found some rates so as long as possible 2.5 or 2 or whatever right you can research and then you can just type on it okay if you put this number with the hard number not this calculation you have to explain where you got this number right where you got this two point so you can cite you can cite this information on the word file when you explain. SM500, I also found on the website, some website, like 8% average rate of return, historical average rate of return, and the market risk premium is 8% minus 2.5. And then we multiply this 5.5% by the, right, the beta. And then we got equity risk premium. Oh, sorry. 5.5% times beta so that we can get the risk, uh, the equity risk premium. Then, again, it should be percentage. Okay, then what is the required rate of return? That required rate of return? Yes. Required rate of return is now we add the risk free rate again right and then we got 8.99 which is required rate of return of apple which is or or the common uh, the, the cost of a common stock now let's calculate the web we have learned why we use uh, the market value rather than uh, the, the book value of all the capital because we assume that the borrowing amount is based on a current amount we borrow money, right? The Apple borrow money uh, from uh, the capital holders, like stockholders or bondholders. They assume that they put their money as of today, not all the day in the book value. So price per share, let's assume 150. Today, how much was the, the Apple stock price? Uh, Apple stock price, Apple. Okay, oh, 147, uh, so we put 147. And then common st outstanding shares to calculate the total market value of a common stock. The common st outstanding shares, so where do I get it? Right, on the company valuation part, you have to put all the consolidated statement of the operations and consolidated balance sheet uh, where you found that information, right? 16 million of 420, 60 billion, 426. So we put this value on it. So, um, where is it? Okay, there we go. 16, four to seven. So all the number of shares is 16 uh, billion, 427, right? And then highest coupon rate, okay. The reason why we use this highest coupon rate, you can use like average coupon rate that the company has been issued, or uh, you can uh, the calculate a YTM, yield to maturity, of the recently uh, the issued uh, the, the, the bond. But I wanted to use the Apple uh, 10K. Uh, there are a lot of ways to calculate uh, the cost of debt, but I want you to follow this, uh, the, the most conservative way to use, uh, to use this, uh, the, the highest coupon rate the recently the company issued. So it depends on your judgment, but my case, I want to use as high uh, the, the cost of debt as possible to get uh, like entering the value of a stock or to get entering the value stock a more reasonable, more conservative uh, the price, the value.
okay? Because 3.6 out of all, all this uh, note has, that has been issued, now we can increase weighted average cost of the capital that decreases the entry value of the stock, okay? So I put just 3.6%. Tax rate, where do I get the tax rate again? Yeah, tax rate from the 10K, right? The tax rate, I put the 13.3%. Effective tax rate is actual tax, tax uh, the rate uh, the company uh, pay for. So 13.3%. Three percent, and then market value of debt. Market value. Where do you get the market value of debt? Equal, and then on the company valuation, uh, the consolidated balance sheet indicates the total non-current liabilities. Right, one hundred sixty-two billion four hundred thirty-one. That amount is uh, the non-current liability or debt. You can include the, uh, the term debt or uh, the commercial paper in the liability, current liability section, but uh, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it doesn't make any significant changes, yeah, because the comparing comparing uh, with uh, the market value of common stock is very small. You can uh, they recognize this. Okay. Anyway, I use oh, I think it is different amount here. Total non kernel liability. And then the market F value, market value of a common stock, 147 per share times number of shares outstanding. And then, well, we got it $2.4 trillion. $2.4 trillion and a $4 billion uh, and $769 uh, the million dollars is the market value of Apple, right? So total market value is just the sum of these two up. And then let's just take that information and the cost of common stock is 8.99% and weighted average cost of capital exactly the same uh, the, this, uh, the, the equation we want to apply. So first, debt amount, market value of debt divided by total market value of capital times one minus tax rate, 13%. Why? Because the cost of debt is tax deductible, right? Interest expense is tax deductible. And then times what you need is 3.6% cost of debt. And plus, now the market value of common stock divided by total market value of capital resource and then we got the proportion and finally we use the cost of common stock right the cost of common stock and then we got 8.62 percent weighted average cost of capital this weighted average cost of capital is the discount rate that we are going to use to discount all the future cash flows in the free cash flow of the firm model here. So you put this weighted average cost of capital yeah, from the weighted average cost of capital sheet, we sheet, we calculate it. Okay. Okay. I see you in the next video clip uh, where uh, we will uh, produce this operating cash flows and uh, the intangible value calculations. See you. Bye-bye.